Hello and welcome. My name is Jordan and this is Airport CEO. Today I'm going to talk to you about baggage handling. I've been playing this game since it first launched on early access and this is definitely one of the biggest pain points for newer players to understand as there are so many things that can go completely wrong if you don't understand how this system works. So why bother with baggage handling? Well, it is a core aspect of any airport in the real world. An airport CEO, it adds a new level of gameplay and you actually earn money based on each piece of baggage that flows through your airport. It can definitely be a challenge, but it is rewarding, and in my opinion, an airport doesn't really feel complete until you press open on a new baggage claim area and baggage bay. Although, if you follow my Let's Play series, you may have noticed that I often forget to open new baggage bays and then wonder why nothing's happening soon thereafter. But let's not dwell on that. So how do we get started with baggage handling then? We'll need to start by first unlocking the commercial license project followed by the baggage handling project. Once the research is complete, then we'll need to meet the requirements to activate baggage handling within the operations overview section of the management panel. These requirements are, first, hire at least four ramp agents. Second, ramp agent service rounds must be activated. Third, you will need to have an open baggage claim area. And fourth, you will need to have a baggage bay. So before we go any further, let's break down these requirements. Ramp agents are the employees who perform service rounds or inspections on aircraft. They also load and unload baggage from the aircraft. They will also work at the baggage bays, loading and unloading the baggage trucks. A baggage claim area allows arriving passengers to collect their baggage prior to leaving the terminal. These areas should be built outside of the secure zone and should have a baggage belt carousel and a conveyor belt which feeds into the carousel from your baggage bay. As a general rule, I try to have one baggage claim carousel per three aircraft stands. The flights will be scheduled to the baggage claim area in sequential order and I've never had a backlog or issue with following this rule of thumb. The baggage bay is an object which has two baggage belts on it one for arrivals and one for departures. There are also service roadway connections to allow baggage trucks to pick up and drop off bags. The baggage bay must be built inside a terminal structure and also should be inside a secure area. You will also need to ensure that your ramp agents are able to reach it via walking. You can check the connectedness of your baggage bay area by using the display walkable area heat map, which may be useful if you're building the baggage bay in a separate building away from your actual passenger terminal. You will always require a minimum of two ramp agents, one for each side working at the baggage bay. You can adjust the number of ramp agents required by selecting the baggage bay and adding or removing ramp agents. To get the baggage bay up and running, you will first need to add the service road connections. Second, you will need to connect your baggage claim area to the arrival side of the baggage bay via conveyor belts. Third, you will need to connect any check-in desks to the departure side of the baggage bay via more conveyor belts. And lastly, you will need to connect any of your aircraft stands, check-in desks, baggage claim directly to the baggage bay as shown in the video. Baggage trucks are not actually mentioned as a requirement on the baggage handling toggle, but they are a requirement to your baggage handling process. In order for things to run smoothly, you need to make sure that you have baggage trucks available to transport bags to and from your baggage bay. If you don't have any baggage trucks and an aircraft arrives expecting bags to be unloaded, it will sit at the stand until either you manually dismiss the aircraft or until a baggage truck is made available to unload the bags. You will want to use the small pull force baggage trucks to service small aircraft. You will want to use the large pull force baggage trucks for both medium and large aircraft. Pro tip, these trucks can be assigned to specific aircraft stands, so you can ensure that the planes being serviced at any particular stand are not delayed due to unavailable baggage trucks. So the general flow for when a flight arrives at your airport is this. First, your ramp agents will be dispatched to the plane to do their service round. They will unload the baggage as required onto an available baggage truck. The baggage truck will transport the bags to the arrival side of the baggage bay via the service roadways. 
the ramp agents at the baggage bay will unload the baggage truck and put the bags onto the arrivals conveyor belt. The bags should then be carried out to the baggage claim area via the conveyor belts. The arriving passengers will collect the bags and leave the airport terminal. When a flight is departing your airport, the general flow will go like this. First, you will need to provide a way for the passengers to check in their bags. When using small check-in desks, the airport will still function, but the departing passengers will have to carry their bags onto the flight themselves. This option is fine for smaller airports who may be in a bind financially. Medium check-in desks are available after unlocking baggage handling. These desks have two conveyor belt connections, which allow passenger service agents to assist passengers with checking their bags in and sending them directly to an assigned baggage bay. Self check-in and baggage drops are available after researching the automation project. These will allow your passengers to check in their own bags and drop them off without the need for passenger service agents. Once the bags are checked in, they will travel along the conveyor belts to the departure side of the baggage bay. When the time comes, the baggage truck will arrive and the ramp agents will load the truck with the required bags. The bags will be taken to the awaiting aircraft via the service roadways. The ramp agents who are servicing the flight will unload the baggage truck and load the aircraft. As long as you followed the video up to this point, you should have a grasp on the basics of baggage handling and be able to get your system up and running in no time. But wait, there's more. There are more advanced features which I haven't touched on yet, so the second part of this video will be dedicated to those. With the addition of baggage handling to your airport, you will also start to be rated on your baggage security performance and you may receive emergencies and fines related to baggage. Baggage security can be improved by unlocking three different research projects. The first is Baggage Security Tier 1. Upon unlocking this research project, you will gain access to the Baggage Scanner 1, as well as the Bag Destroyer. The Baggage Scanner has three different belt connections, one inbound and two outbound. One outbound belt is for good bags, and one outbound belt is for bad bags. These are represented by the colors of the arrows. At the first stages of baggage security, the Baggage Scanner 1 should be positioned to scan all incoming bags for departing aircraft. Any rejected bags should be sent directly into a bag destroyer. Baggage Security Tier 2 This project will give you access to five more scanner options. Organics, guns, explosives, drugs, and money. The Tier 2 scanners operate the exact same as the Tier 1 scanner. Upon unlocking these scanners, you should modify your baggage security so that any bags rejected by the Tier 1 scanner should flow into each of the Tier 2 scanners. Any rejected bags from the Tier 2 scanners should then be sent directly into the bag destroyer. Baggage Security Tier 3 This project will give access to a scanning station. This station is staffed by a security officer who will manually check any bags that flow through it. Upon unlocking this project, you should modify your baggage security so that all bags are scanned by the Tier 1 scanner. Rejected bags should then flow through each of the Tier 2 scanners. Any rejected bags from the Tier 2 scanner should be manually checked by the security officer at the Tier 3 scanner. And if any bag is rejected at Tier 3, it should then be sent to the bag destroyer. There are definitely arguments online for various types of setup for baggage security scanners. However, taking a look at the tooltips for the airport ratings that are specific for baggage security will quickly tell you that this is the best setup if you're trying to achieve the best airport rating possible. I might even suggest adding two tier 3 scanners at the end to ensure that if anything goes wrong and a bad bag makes it past the first tier 3 scanner, then the second tier 3 scanner should in theory catch it. Next up, tilt trays. Tilt trays are obtained after researching the tilt tray project. These are used on the conveyor lines to sort bags to different destinations. They are best used when sending bags to multiple baggage claim areas or when there are multiple baggage bays connected to your check-in area. They can also be used to ease the amount of bags being sent through security checkpoints. By right-clicking the tilt tray, you can change the type of sorting that it's doing. 
The default option is to destination. Using this option, the tilt tray will check where the bag is going and send the bag down the quickest conveyor to the destination. The forward option simply sends all bags forward, effectively acting as a normal conveyor belt. The final three options, forward and left, forward and right, left and right, these options will allow you to split the bags. It will alternate the direction in which it sends the bag. If we are using left and right, for example, the first bag will go left, the second bag will go right, the third bag will go left, and so on. So why would we use this? Well, one use case is that it allows us to set up multiple security checkpoints to reduce the number of bags going through a particular checkpoint. For example, if you have a large number of bags to scan, you can set up two security checkpoints and split the bags using the tilt tray to evenly split the bag traffic up. High speed conveyors. These are unlocked after researching the high speed conveyors project. It will give you access to high speed belts. These are especially useful for when your bags are traveling long distances along your conveyor belts. As far as I know, all conveyors which are a part of items such as the baggage bay, baggage scanners, the medium check-in desk, and the bag drops are the normal or slower conveyors and cannot be upgraded. At the time of this recording, you can also use high-speed conveyors for your baggage claim carousel. Apparently, passengers can still grab their bags off the carousel even while they are traveling at top speeds. You will eventually gain access to a research project called Belt Loader. This research unlocks two different belt loader trucks. These trucks are used by the ramp agents to speed up the loading and unloading process for the bags from aircraft. Small aircraft do not use belt loaders. The small hauler belt loader truck should be used for medium aircraft. The large carrier belt loader truck should be used for large aircraft. The belt loaders can be assigned to specific aircraft stands just like the baggage trucks, so you can ensure there is always one available for the ramp agents to use to get the job done quickly and prevent any flight delays. So that's it. If you have any questions about baggage handling, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. If you have any additional tips and tricks that I may have missed, feel free to share those in the comments as well. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Airport CEO content, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take care.